I might when I'm finished with her album reactions choose one of her songs and get a tattoo of it Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Anna and as you've seen in the title of this video, I'm a Swiftie reacting to Katy Perry's discography for the first time. Like I've already explained in my two previous reactions, the first one to her new album Smile, I'm gonna leave a card right here. And also in my latest reaction to her first pop album One of the Boys, also gonna leave a card right here. I do know some of Katy Perry's songs. To be honest, I think only the singles because I just always loved her sound and grew up listening to Thinking of You and a couple of other anthems as well. So yeah, it's not like I don't know Katy Perry at all. I just don't know her discography. And out of Teenage Dream, The Complete Confection, which is the album we're gonna be reacting today, I actually know seven songs. So that leaves me 12 songs that I never listened to before. And I'm so excited to get to know them. So before we dive into that, I just want to thank you guys so much for all the support you're giving me with these reactions. You keep asking me to react to Prism and Witness and I just want to assure you guys that that's definitely going to happen. The reason why I haven't already jumped into those albums is because I really want to get the whole picture, the whole experience of Katie's discography. So that's why I decided to do this chronologically except for Smile because that was my, my first reaction to Katie. But yeah, I just want to encourage you to keep on this journey with me because we are gonna get there. Also, please let me know if there are any live performances or music videos, though I do think the MVs I've watched most of the singles, but I could try my hand at doing a review of those music videos as well. So please tell me in the comments what else from Katie you want me to react to and I'll be glad to see to that. All of that said, I just want to clarify that I did a quick research on Wikipedia about the difference between 2010's Teenage Dream and then the 2012 album. And I might be wrong with this, but apparently the Complete Confection just added a couple of tracks and also an acoustic version to the one that got away that I'm so excited to hear. So yeah, I hope I'm doing this right i hope i picked the right album so now let's do this tracks one to four i already know which are teenage dream last friday night california girls and firework but i'm gonna listen to them anyway like i did in my previous reactions just so that i can read the lyrics and maybe understand the storyline and how each one of these songs work with the entire album also one last thing i'm quite aware that my black emo outfit doesn't fit the vibes of the album at all because from the cover i can see that this is gonna be colorful but i just want it to look like my teenage self and my teenage self liked to pretend that she was a vampire so hi pleasure to meet you this was my teenage anna persona as usual you see me glancing this direction it's because i'm reading the lyrics just to be sure that i didn't miss anything Without any makeup, I'll be young forever. What I like the most about this song is that the lyrics are so vivid that I can just imagine all of that romance happening. I mean, I wasn't really the most adventurous teenager, so most teen experiences I cannot relate. But listening to the song, I can just picture myself being all free and falling in love and being adventurous and being wild. It's just that good. It wakes up your imagination. I, I love this. I love this. There is a book that I read last year that is called The Missing Piece. And the whole message behind the book is that you are your own missing piece and no one else can complete you but yourself. And though I do agree with that 100%, I love this line. I finally found you my missing puzzle piece. I'm complete. I'm gonna sing that to myself crying in the shower for the rest of my life. Tonight, no regrets. Just love. Let's run away and don't have a look back. I wanna be serious about the song, but this is such a bop. I just enjoy it. When it plays on the radio, I'm just bopping to it all the time. But yeah, the message is pretty clear. I don't know how old Katie was by the time this album was released, so please let me know. Seems to me like she's just reminiscing about her teenage experiences with love and telling this beautiful love story that I'm pretty sure didn't last because 
Teenage love stories rarely last. I don't want to be negative. There are exceptions. I do know some couples that met in high school and are married today. But most times when you're that young and you fall in love with someone, it ends quickly. But it's the kind of love that remains with you for your entire life because you do not forget about teenage love. It just stays there in the back of your mind. You're always going to remember how you felt. And you're probably going to question yourself about why you don't feel the same way with your new, mature and more adult relationships. But it has to do with the fact that when you fell in love as a teenager, emotions were just so strong because of puberty, of hormones, of the way you used to see life and how you see it in a different light. So all of that plays a part in determining why you're gonna remember that kind of love and that sensation, all of the sensations involved. So I guess that's exactly why the song is called Teenage Dream. Because that's what it was. It was a dream. It wasn't reality. What you felt in that moment might have been real, but it feels so distant now and so out of comparison with every other experience you have as an adult that it just seems like a dream. Anyway, that's my interpretation as a 25 years old single lady that's probably gonna end up with no love in her life and a house full of cats. Let's go to last Friday night. I love this song. I absolutely love this song. It's so fun. <laughs> also, just want to comment on how in the music video and also in the picture that's on the side with the lyrics and stuff, she's using braces and now I'm using braces as well as an adult and I just relate to the song now in a deeper level. I remember watching this music video for the first time and just wishing that I could go to a party like that. I still haven't fulfilled that teenage dream. I've never went to a party like that. I sometimes wish I did, but then I remember that I'm an introvert and I just love being stuck in my house, so I'm fine. Give me that saxophone. Honestly, it's such a fun song. I just have one thing to say about the song. And it's enough to understand the impact it had in pop society. Every single person I know to this day still uses this song in their Instagram captions every Friday. I don't think that's ever going to change. It's a tradition by this point. It's like when you turn 22 and you post a picture with a caption. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling... Let's jump into track number three, also about California girls. Also, I miss Snoop Dogg. What happened to him? I have no idea. I remember being my 15 years old innocent self and listening to the song for the first time on MTV and I thought it was so scandalous and kinky that she was talking about sex on the beach and then it took me a while to understand that she was talking about a drink. I think I literally learned about that when I was 23 years old. That's how not a party person I was. I... I mean the one. I mean like she's the one. Kiss her, touch her, squeeze her bum. Katie my lady, yeah? I remember her little legs like on the music video, that was the cutest thing ever. I mean, I love the fact that with every single big pop star, they're always gonna have a song that's dedicated to their hometown or something. Taylor's is Welcome to New York and Katie's California Girls. Gotta stand, this is a classic. I mean, the music video is just unforgettable. I remember back then the media was making such a fuss over the fact that she was naked in the MV and the smallest spark of feminism that resided within me was already like just leave her be what do you have to do with that now this is a song now this is a story all about how okay this is a song that i've always been completely obsessed with and doing these reactions and paying attention to katie's lyrics I'm realizing that there is at least one song in each album in which it talks about 
dreams and hopes and just encourages people to be themselves which i absolutely love and i think it's the most beautiful message an artist can give someone and this song is the embodiment of that firework do you ever feel like the plastic Maybe the reason why all the doors are closed so you can open one that leads you to the perfect road. That just makes me want to keep moving, you know? <sighs> this song gives me life. I love this so much. It's funny how every single album so far has at least one song like that. I mean, Smile is basically entirely made of songs like that, so that's an exception. But in one of the boys, it was Fingerprints. I fell in love with that song so completely. And I just love that she does that. She, she has the ability to both make a bop, a party bop, and a song that makes you truly think about life and what you're doing with that and everything that you're capable of. I think I have an idea. It might be completely crazy, but at the same time, it's just, it sounds like me. I might, when I'm finished with her album reactions, choose one of her songs and get a tattoo of it. And this song is a huge competitor. I know this is complete madness, but I've been delaying for so long my Taylor Swift tattoo, which I'm going to get soon as soon as quarantine is over here. And since Katie has so much relatable and encouraging songs, I just guess why not choose one of hers as well. So if you guys wanna tell me your opinion about that idea, or maybe help me with more ideas of lyrics that you find interesting enough to turn into a tattoo, please let me know in the comments because I'm just too impulsive and I need help. Let's jump into Peacock. Never listened to it before. I'm curious about that. I wanna see your peacock, da, da, your peacock, Wait, what? Yeah, this yeah, is so cool. Yeah, you know what the song reminds me of so far? Hey Mickey. Oh Mickey, you're so fun, you're so funny, you blow my hey Mickey. Hey Mickey. Oh Mickey, you're so fun. <sighs> I love this kind of melody. It's so catchy. Oh, I, I'm gonna restart it because I loved those first. 15 seconds. I wanna see your peacock, da, da, your peacock, da, da, okay, but the innuendo in that? I love this! Okay, this is the jaw dropping, eye popping, head turning, body shocking song. Again, Katie just makes the perfect bobs for RuPaul's Drag Race. That's always the image with her songs for me. <laughs> That's so early 2000s. I wanna see your peacock. <laughs> That's the best in the world I've seen in a song in a long, long, long time. Such a Katie Bridge as well. It has her signature in it. Probably never felt so straight towards a song as with this one. But at the same time, this is a gay anthem. I am claiming this for the gays. I mean, I probably have no rights to do that. So good. I, I I can't wait to go to a club, but perhaps I'm 10 years late to the party, am I not? Because probably when I go back, when I have the opportunity to go to a club again, because we're still in quarantine down here, they're probably not gonna play a song from 10 years ago, but I, I, I wanna dance to this song so freaking bad. It's a Hey Mickey kind of sound and I, I'm all in, I'm all in. Now let's go to Circle the Drain, track number six. Oh, it's more rocky. Oh my god, her voice is so different here. I love it. It's got a different timbre to it. I don't think I heard this kind of vocal from her before. I love it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Lady Gaga. Right here, let me know if you agree with that. Now, I guess. Isn't that so Lady Gaga? In a good way, I'm not comparing them to say that the song is, I don't know, a copy of anything. It's just the way she's singing. I'm not a vocal coach, so uh, I don't, I don't, don't know how to identify that. But it's, but it's more raw. Like she's singing with a chest voice. I love it. Let me pay attention to the lyrics. 
Okay, so she's dating with this person. He's apparently a drug addict and he's neglecting their relationship because of that. It's actually sad. A lot of guys need to listen to this song, especially to this part right here. I wanna be your lover, not your fucking mother. I mean, this is an extreme case, he's an addict, but in general, men just kind of have the tendency to look for motherly traits in their partners and that's so bizarre like i know boys are raised to not do anything and just expect women to serve them but like grow up because if you're in a relationship you shouldn't be looking for someone to take care of you in that way you should be looking to have a different kind of attachment so <laughs> Oh, oh, so is, is he a musician as well or writer? Because she said, you say it helps you write your rhymes, whatever helps you sleep at night. So is he a songwriter, a singer perhaps, or is he, I don't know, just a poet? Please let me know if there is a real story behind that or if she's just, I don't know, writing something fictional because that's so interesting. <laughs> I love the way she sings the word choked by literally choking. That's that's top notch. I mean, my emo teenage self is kind of in character now. This is so rock and roll for Katie. And the sirens as well. Ah, so good. Such a good production. Her vocals. like a lullaby in the end. Loved it. Oh my, her vocals in this are really, really, really different from what I'm used to. And then the production is such a surprise. And this is so much more rock and roll than I could ever expect for this album. But I mean, drugs and abusive failed relationships are also related to themes of teenage years so yeah lyrically and storytelling wise i can see how this fits with the album but the sound is so different oh but now that i see what is the next track I completely understand why that song, why Circle the Drain, came before that. This is track number seven, the one that got away. And on my 18th birthday, we got matching tattoos. Okay, this is a reference that I have to talk about. I won't remember right now what was the song exactly. I have to go back and check again. But I, I'm pretty sure that Smile had a song in which Katie talked about being ready to get tattoos again and that being a metaphor for falling in love again and finding love again and that to me is directly related to the one that got away there's no way that that wasn't a reference it's not a stretch right please tell me it's not a stretch don't want to be that person making comparisons with Taylor Swift, but I have to make one. I love that line when she says they were talking about the future like they had a clue. And it reminds me of probably every single Swifties favorite Taylor Swift song ever, All Too Well. And a certain line in which Taylor talks about this guy talking to her about the, the past like she was her future. So yeah, I guess I have kind of a type for sad breakup songs. And this is the type. Also, this reminds me of John Locke, the two of us against the rest of the world. Sherlock Holmes and John Watson in the BBC show Sherlock. Um, I ship them to the rest of my days so yeah i'm that kind of a clown oh i didn't remember that part about the guy having the tattoo removed that's so sad actually i mean it's it's just sensible enough because if you make a tattoo with your partner and then you guys break up it's only just expected that you're gonna remove that but it's still sad so i guess the lesson for today is don't get tattoos with the person you're falling in love with unless you're katy perry then you can do that because it's katy perry we don't care if she does something stupid i wish i had a drink and not water 
complex song because you're literally taking breakup and heartbreak and misery and putting inside an upbeat melody when i listen to this song i want to cry at the same time that i want to vibe to it it's complex with the one that got away i guess i consolidated in my mind the idea and the theory that well it's not a theory it's kind of obvious it's the name of the album but yeah this is an album about teenage years and about the experiences you have as a teenager which is quite similar to some of the to one of the boys in that aspect because that's the conclusion that i got as well with the album that she was talking about her young experiences and figuring out who she was and falling in love multiple times and feeling lost in life and finding her way back into love. So there's a part of me that thinks these two albums have so much to do with each other. I don't know if I'm alone in that opinion, so please let me know what you think about that. What is to you the difference, the main difference between one of the boys and Teenage Dream? Now the next track, I have a funny story with that. Not exactly sure if it's funny or tragic though, it used to be my song with my first boyfriend, my first and only boyfriend actually, and it was our song because I used to call him an extraterrestrial. <laughs> And Katie released this single around the same time that our relationship was starting. So I have mixed feelings about it. Let's listen to it. Track number seven, E.T. Track number eight, sorry. This is bringing me memories that I'm not sure if I want to deal with. Okay, in my defense, it was, it was such a good song to be a couple song. I'm happy that that was our song. It might have ruined a little bit of my experience with this song after all this time, but I still cannot deny that it's a good song. I remember I used to like these songs that deal with um, galaxy themes. From the top of my head, I can remember two other similar songs in that aspect. Um, one is from Black Eyed Peas, Meet Me Halfway. I used to love that song. And then there was Fireflies by Owl City. Wanna be a victim, ready for abduction. I absolutely love this bridge. It has such an atmosphere to it. I It's a great song, it's obviously, and that's the reason why I chose that song as our song and in that relationship. It's obviously about this guy that she thinks of as out of this world and extraordinary and there's no one else like him. I know I look like a little bit done <laughs> with that image right now, but that's trauma but yeah that, that's what the song is about about this person that she thinks is so different from all the other people that she met in her life and she found in him something that she couldn't find anywhere else i wish i could only advise to young katie that this is not gonna work baby just run moving on to track number nine who am i living for feels like something summer electro hits for me so far Oh, her vocals are amazing in this. This is so fitting to Mulan right now. I mean, Disney just released their new adaptation of Mulan, which I think was completely unnecessary because the original was just perfect. But anyway, I, I can see a sequence of Mulan getting ready for the war to the sound of this. I can feel a phoenix inside of me as I march along to a different beat, slowly swallowing down my fear, I'm ready for the road less traveled, suiting up for my crowning battle. This test is my own cross to bear, but I will get there. This is so Mulan. This is beautiful. I love this. There is so much to unpack here. So much. So in the pre-chorus, she says, it's never easy to be chosen. Never easy to be called. Standing on the front line when the when, when the bomb starts to fall, I can see the heavens, but I still hear the flames calling out my name. What I interpret out of this is that Katie's finally got to a place where she feels like she was chosen. So she's in front of an audience, people are listening to her, and she says she can see the heavens, so she sees the good side in there. 
but she's also hearing the flames. So fame is probably a battleground in her life as well. And they're calling out my name. It's probably about the responsibility of it all, of being famous, of having a platform, of having your voice being heard. But at the same time, you have media against you because well, let's be completely honest, the media is always ready to be against every single artist out there that's relevant enough to give them attention. And from what I could see in your comments, Katie always had to deal with a lot of negative press. So that's what I'm guessing this has to do with. She's in a place right now where she's both blessed and damned because of fame. the biblical references we love it when she says i know one spark will shock the world and i need your strength to handle the pressure i don't know if she's asking that from her fans from the people who are listening to her probably or even if this song is her claiming to god like i need god's help because she uses esther in her references so okay I might be stretching a little right now and I might be coming from a place of a Christian person and that's why I'm also seeing this way of interpreting things. But when she repeats again and again in the chorus that she cannot ignore this war at the end of it all and who am I living for? Who am I living for? Who is she dedicating her life to? Is it herself? Is it to God? Is it to the greater good? To the things that she actually believes in and her morals and all of that? Or is she just following what other people are doing and maybe not fulfilling her purpose to the extent that she could be doing that? Uh, might be a stretch. Yeah, from a Christian point of view, I, I can see that as well. <sighs> that bridge. Oh my god. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Don't let the greatness get you down. Uh, it's definitely about that, about the responsibility, about the fame, about the voice, everything that comes with that. With great powers come great responsibility. I was not expecting that song at all. It really raised me with um, a lot of questions. It took me a long, long, long while to think about purpose and what I was doing with my life and actually have a clue about any of that. So that wasn't me as a teenager. I definitely wasn't so focused on the things that I am today but I guess for Katie the experience was completely different because by this point well I'm not I don't know if she was famous when she was a teenager how old was she again I, I never know her age in anything but yeah I guess if you have to deal with fame as a teenager that's the exact line of thought that you're going to follow now let's listen to track number 10 pro Reminded me of one of the boys. Pretty Oh, this is interesting. That, that first metaphor right there in the beginning, she's a pyramid, but with him, she's just a grain of sand. That's honestly one of the best lyrics that I've ever read to define an abusive relationship. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh my god, this is gonna be one of my favorites from the album. I already know. That's a great, great, great way to define um, the reasons behind an abusive relationship as well, which doesn't justify any of it, but explains a lot. He's scared of the light that's inside of her, so he keeps her in the dark. Most times, that's exactly what happens. The fact that someone is abusive towards you, it's not okay at all, obviously, but it shows that they have something going on inside themselves, because the only reason why they want to put you down is because they're full of insecurities and they don't want to see someone outshining them, which is completely selfish and wrong in so many levels. So beautiful, oh my god. So he keeps her in the dark. Can't believe she's become a shell of herself. Those lyrics. I 
I'm growing a kind of admiration for this woman with each song. The message I see most recurrent from her songs is that of not giving up on your dreams and trusting in your worth and that you have a purpose in this world. And that's a message that moves me so much. And then we have songs like this in which she's directly addressing young girls and women of all ages actually and explaining to them what constitutes an abusive relationship and uh, most important of all there is a way out and if you didn't know that already you're learning it right now i have so much respect for katie so much respect this is so important oh the piano <laughs> oh my god respect that's all i have to say about this song respect 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 now let's jump to track number 11 Hummingbird Heartbeat. That's such a beautiful title and it reminded me of Hunger Games. <laughs> the Hummingbird. That's so like 80s. Love this? I'm sure. What is this song? This has her signature all over it. I love this. Oh my god. My hair must be a mess by right now, but it's worth it. <sighs> Bless. Oh my god, what was that? What was that? I was not expecting another bop that far deep into the album. If there is a possibility that we're following a storyline here, then I'm so, so happy because she literally went out of an abusive relationship and then jumped into this beautiful relationship where apparently they're, they're still loving each other even when seasons change and he's making her that happy and he's so sweet to her and with them she feels like she can spread her wings and fly I mean that's the goal if you're in a relationship so I'm so happy for her also why am I using male pronouns to explain this song she I, I don't think she uses pronouns in the entire song, so I'm taking it as a bi icon as well. So far into these reactions, I can identify three types of songs from Katie. Of course, she's capable of doing a lot more than that, and this is just like the main themes that I see going on. Number one is the breakup songs, which I'm biased because I'm a Swifty, but absolutely love them. And then we have the self-development songs, which are pure perfection. And last but not least, we have the falling in love songs. And Katie can paint such a beautiful, accurate, precise picture of what it feels like to fall in love. Every single song of hers like that. This makes me feel like I'm looking at a pensive, like Harry Potter pensive, and just seeing her memories, watching the entire thing. It paints a picture. I'm gonna say that again and again. It paints a picture. And I love that from her. I think that's, that's pure talent. To have the ability to write something that immediately reaches people's imagination. That's talent. That requires so much work and talent. And she's got the craft mastered. Now we're going to track number 12, Not Like the Movies. Oh, is it a sad song? The piano? <sighs> is she talking about a ring? Because <laughs> my mind jumped into other things, but I think in the, in the first verse, she's talking about a ring. He put it on me, I put it on, like there was nothing wrong. I, it didn't fit, it wasn't right, it wasn't just the size. They say you know when you know. I don't know. Oh, relatable. That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh my god, this is so heartbreaking. Wow, wow, wow. Her vocals, the lyrics, everything, the piano. One of my best friends, she's been dating for a long time now with the same guy and they're just so in love with each other. But it's the kind of 
calm um, relationship like they just feel comfortable around each other and it's not the explosion of passion that you would expect to unite two people every single time and I always thought that was so uh, interesting <laughs> that's so sweet if stars don't align, if it doesn't stop time, if you cannot see the sign, wait for it. 100% worth every penny spent. He'll be the one that finishes your, your sentences. Don't give up on someone too soon just because it's not giving you enough butterflies because it might those kind of things grow and you'll find love in the most unexpected places. You'll find love in a hopeless place. <laughs> That's it. That's it. We'll find love out of people and situations we didn't expect. Like oh no! <laughs> Stop that! Oh my god. Oh my god, those... I kind of want to listen to this song 10 more times in a loop. I have no words to describe how beautiful this song is. We are all programmed by media and by television and by cinema to expect love to be something that it isn't in real life, unfortunately. It might be for some people. I know there are people out there with insane love stories, but don't expect, we shouldn't expect that to to happen to us because it's probably never gonna happen like that. And I think that's exactly the beauty of it, both in real life and in fiction, because I don't think we would be able to relate to fiction and to get so moved by it if it was exactly like real life. We just have to keep an open mind because love might happen in different ways. I wish I could go to a concert of hers, but in an intimate setting, and just listen to all her songs in the piano and that's definitely one of the songs that I wish I could hear live. Now we're going to the acoustic version of The One That Got Away. I'm excited for that as well because as you already know, one of my favorite songs. I'm not ready for this. I'm not. Summer after high school, when we first met, I put those red pants on. <laughs> I love this song! This perfect, perfect. Oh my god, that's so beautiful. I want Katie to sing myself to sleep. Is that her harmonizing with herself? Or is that another person in the background? Seems like a guy, but it could be her. Ugh. Oh my god. Did you listen how long she hold that high note? 10, 11, 11, 11 seconds sustaining the highest note. The talent just chills. Now we got another song that I already know but never really paid attention to the lyrics so we're gonna be doing that now. Track number 13, Part of Me. Oh wait, is this the original version? It seems like a remix. Is this song always like this? I don't remember this song being so... With these songs, I'm never completely sure if she's really talking about a person, about a relationship, or if she's again addressing the media and addressing everything she she goes through in her career because she's literally saying you took my light you drained me down you chewed me and spit me out so that seems like media but that was then and this is now now look at me yes girl look at her now let you go mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Wow, look at her now. That you never gonna ever take away from me. No. Yes, a mood. I'm still conflicted if it has to do with the relationship or if she's just addressing the haters. I think you can look at it from both perspectives. But if I'm looking at the album as a storyline again, 
I think it has to do with the relationship, yes. And she's basically being the strong woman that she is and imposing herself and saying, no, you, you, you can take everything from me, but you cannot take my soul. You cannot break my soul. Really didn't remember the song being so rhythmic and yeah, so, so fast pacing. So I don't know, is this a remix of the song? Or am I just maybe imagining things? That said, let's jump into another track that I also know, which is Wide Awake. I never really paid attention to what this song was saying, but it looks to me like Katie's looking back and reminiscing the memories of when she was a young girl, which makes sense, this song belonging to Teen Dream. And yeah, she's just basically doing what each and every one of us has done at least once in our lives, which is to think to ourselves, only if I knew then what I know now. I love it that she comes up with this line, I need nothing to complete myself because I don't I don't remember what was the song exactly. It's Teenage Dream, right? It's Teenage Dream. She talks in Teenage Dream about this guy being her missing piece and with him she's complete. And now she's going against that. She's saying, no baby, I need nothing to complete myself. She's complete in herself. Growth. Growth. I see Wide Awake as in I'm conscious now, I know what I'm doing, or at least I know who I am, I know where I stand, and if I could go back time, I probably wouldn't have done some stupid things that I did, because now I know better. Let's jump into track 16, Dressing Up, never heard this one before, I'm so excited. Different vibes. This reminds me of Madonna for some reason. This is such a sexy song though. Again, RuPaul's Drag Race. I can just imagine myself getting dragged up and vibing to this. Suddenly hot in here? Seriously? That's such a sexy song. I kind of want to go to a club and get in drag and dance to this all night long with a drink in my hand. That's what I want. Now I have E.T. again, but this time featuring Kanye West. I'm gonna ask you guys if it's okay if I jump this version because, I mean, one, I already got a little bit of trauma with the song and two, I don't really see myself listening to anything by Kanye West, so even though it is a Katie song, I'm sorry. Please don't come for me, but I, I'm jumping track number 17 and we're going to a remix of TGIF with Missy Elliott, track number 18. Hey Bob, that's my review. Let me just catch my breath and we're going to the last track in the album. So excited for this. I never heard this before or did I? Tell me Sunshine's Magazine smash up. I have no idea what this is. It's seven minutes long. Oh, it's a mashup of all her songs from the album? Is that it? Yes. Oh my God, I, I'm gonna party so hard. So, believe it or not, I've been filming for three hours now, three hours. This video is gonna take me so much work. Overall, let me just fix the camera here for a second. Overall, this album is indeed a teenage dream. It talks about all the things that you go through as a teenager, from, I don't know, having fun and falling in love, to getting stuck into abusive relationships, realizing that you don't actually need anyone to be complete 
and questioning your purpose and all of that. Listening to it, I just felt transported into my 15 years old self. Emo outfit and all, I just found myself vibing so hard all the time or either getting emotional. I'm so happy and grateful that you guys suggested me this album. And now, don't forget, next reaction video is going to be Roll the Drums, Prism. Yes, I, I know you guys have been asking about that album like crazy and I cannot wait to react to it. I think I'm gonna have such a good time. Thank you for watching all the way here. If you want to support my channel, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below and activate the notifications bell so you know when the Prism reaction is out. I'll see you in the next video guys. Bye!